Okay. Here we have the composition of two functions in a picture graph, and they want us to give them the domain and range of f of g, okay? So f of g means that it's doing f of g. So g is the inside function, which means I need to evaluate this one first, and then once I do that, I can do this one second, okay? Which is why they gave me the g over here, because that's gonna have to happen first, and then I will apply that to the f function. And so what you need to do to figure out the domain and range is basically find the pairs. So these are all the possible values for domain. I don't know which of these are actually going to be part of my domain and which ones are not, but I know that everything in the G domain is a possible domain of F of G. And everything that's in the range of F is a possible range value for f of g. It doesn't mean that that's the domain of f of, f of g and this is the range of g. It just means that that's the possibilities, okay? How do I know which ones are and which ones aren't? You have to go through this whole process. So if I plug um, one into the g function, what comes out? So if I plug one into the G function, I'm going, my output is going to be a six. Then what happens if I plug that six into the F function? Here's the six and what is still a six, okay? So that means that for F of G, a one went in and a six at the very end came out, okay? Now, let's go for two. So if I plug two into G, that means this is the input and the output is a three. Then if I go and plug three into F, three into F, two is the output. So I started off with two as my first input and my final output is a two. Now let's move on to four. So four, when I plug it into G, I will get the value two. And then two, when I plug it into F, there's no two to plug in. So since there's no two to plug in, this doesn't exist. It's not applicable, or you can say does not exist. It just doesn't exist. So I'm not gonna have a pair for that because I plugged in a four, but I didn't get anything at the end, okay? So that's not going to have a pair here. This is just missing. Now I go on to seven. So seven, if I plug seven into G, the output is a zero. And if I plug zero into F, zero into F gives me the value four. So my very first input was a seven and my very last output was a four. So this is the pair in F of G. Now we move on to nine. So when we plug nine into G, we get seven. And when we plug seven into F, we get six. So nine was the input to begin with and six was the final output. Now when we go to figure out domain, we're just listing all the different X coordinates, which are one, two, seven, and nine. For the range, we're listing all the different Y coordinates, which are six, two, and four. You do, I said the different Y coordinates. This is not different from any of these. So you don't need to repeat the six twice. And normally we like to write them in order. So two, four, and then six. And this is the domain and the range. But you do have to follow through all of this because some of them will lead you to nothing and then therefore you should not have four in your domain. So notice that this was my possible domain, but this guy was bad. It didn't lead us to a final output. So that guy is not in the domain. And you're not gonna know which guys to exclude unless you do this whole process, okay? Plug the numbers into G, find the outputs, take those outputs, they become inputs for F, and then see what final output you end up with.